and welcome. You're watching Tech 24. I'm Julia Seeger. From agriculture and energy to entertainment and gaming, drone technology is developing at jet speed. And as you'll see, there are a host of unexpected industries that stand to be disrupted in 2017. And in Test 24, we'll present you with Chouette, a drone used by winemakers in France to help them monitor the quality and quantity of their grapes. Unmanned aerial vehicles, or drones if you will, have gained commercial momentum this year. Traditionally relegated to military use and intelligence gathering, they're now becoming a hobby for many. And for some, it's even more than that. It's a way to feel again. Take Agustin Zanoli, for instance. This young Argentinian loved the rush of extreme sports. But after an accident left him paralyzed, he was unable to participate in some of his favorite activities. Now the 22-year-old has found a new way to fulfill his need for speed by flying a racing drone, just with a few adjustments. Growing up, Agustin Zanoli was always on the hunt for adrenaline. He rode motorbikes and ATVs and enjoyed skiing in his native Argentina. But in 2012, just a few weeks shy of his high school graduation, an ATV accident left him paralyzed from the neck down. Right when I had the accident, I realized something bad had happened, because at that moment I couldn't move anymore. But I never thought it was going to be so serious. Despite his dramatic injuries, Agustin stayed on track with most of his plans. He began studying mechanical engineering at university and took up power soccer. But the adrenaline rush was missing. That is, until a friend heard aeronautical engineer Daniel Sequeiros speaking about racing drones at a conference and contacted him to see if it would be possible for Agustin to get involved in the sport. At first I said no, he won't be able to fly because you need to be able to hold the remote control. But I started to think and I said no, something can be developed so that Agustin can fly. Using a virtual reality headset that interprets head movements, Agustin can fly the drone hands-free. A mouthpiece lets him dictate the speed, which can reach up to 100 kilometers per hour. The drone's camera lets him choose his course and immerse himself in the flight, evoking that rush he loves. Flying a racing drone gives me back that same adrenaline that the ATV or motorcycle gave me. And the adrenaline it generates is wonderful. For his part, Sequeiros has never thought about charging for his invention and hopes it can bring joy to others. I want it to be reproducible everywhere for people in the same condition as Agustin, so they can feel the adrenaline you feel when you're flying and going really fast, without any risk. An accident may have stopped Agustin from riding motorbikes, but with a bit of technology, he now has the opportunity to fly. Agustin there, who says he hopes one day to participate in a drone race. Drone races that are becoming very popular worldwide. Here in Paris, for instance, the most famous street, the Champs-Élysées, recently closed to make way for drones. Well, our in-house expert, Dan and Jay Cattlecar, is here on set to tell us more about this event. Hello and welcome, Dan. Hello, Julia. So thousands of people recently came to the Champs-Élysées to see professional drone racers. That's right. Around 180,000 people flocked the Champs-Élysées in the second edition of the Paris Drone Festival to watch 36 participants from 13 countries raise their drones around a one-kilometer circuit. So they had to navigate a number of obstacles, they had to execute some sharp turns, and the way they did it was by using a headset, which were connected to the drones uh, through radio contact, and with a joystick in hand, they were able to make these drones fly through some... Like you can see here, just watching this video makes you feel thrilled. Right. I can't imagine the sensation one must be getting when you're piloting a drone with a cockpit view through the camera. So that's, that was very exciting. And this is just another example of how drone racing is picking up so quickly around the world. In the US, already three leagues are coming up. The first among them is the Drone Racing League, which has attracted a lot of attention and investment. Then there is the Aerial Sports League and Drone World. So soon we'll be, maybe this sport, this drone uh, racing will become mainstream and we'll be watching drone races on TV the way you watch car races and bike races. Right, and so beyond these drone races, there are other quirky activities around drones that are developing right now. Absolutely, there is drone kayaking, there is drone fishing, there is drone snowboarding, drone surfing, and recently there was a video of a man riding a drone to deliver a football just before the start of a match in Portugal.
And so all of these pilots will soon be able to control their drones even better thanks to an innovation by a South Korean startup. It's a thumb joystick. That's right. Uh, it's called Shift and it's made by the Seoul based startup called This Is Engineering. So the idea is very simple. The person who is flying the drone holds the joystick. There is a ring. Uh, the person inserts his thumb into the ring. This ring is connected to the joystick through Bluetooth. The entire system is connected to the drone. So just by moving your thumb, you control the drone, whether it's direction or whether it's speed. Thank you so much, Dan. Well, besides filming and entertainment, drones could also help solve some of the planet's environmental challenges. That's at least what Fabian Westmuller from the startup Eftero in Zurich believes. Hello and welcome to the show, sir. Hello, nice to have you. Your startup is using drones to generate electricity. You call it airborne wind energy. Tell us, how does it work and how did you come up with this innovative idea? Well, actually, the basic concept comes from flying a kite. So probably you all remember when you were flying a kite for the first time. And there's quite a force that is on this rope when you hold it. And we wanted to use this force and generate um, energy, green energy with it. And the basic idea is actually quite old. Um, there were already some, some theoretical works in the 1980s, 1970s. And we just wanted to get this from the theoretical side to this practical side and to develop such a whole system from the early stage prototype to the final prototype that is made of carbon in the end. And now, why is this concept disruptive? What are its advantages, for instance, compared to wind turbines? Well, actually, there are quite a lot of big advantages. Um, for example, um, such a system, such an airborne wind energy system is quite compact, so you can put it on a trailer or something like that, and you can go with it wherever you want, so you can produce energy wherever you want. That means, for example, in a refugee uh, camp, uh, for example, at a um, catastrophe site or in other remote areas. So it's this is one of the big advantages. Furthermore, you don't have to have any infrastructure, so you can put it wherever you want, and you don't need such a huge fundament. For example, like you need when you when you um, install such a big wind turbine, and it's more efficient. So it's said that um, thirty percent, the out of thirty percent of a blade of a windmill produces more than half of the power output and by reducing or by substituting this outer 30 percent with our wing we can produce more energy uh, without yeah putting so much um, mass and structure that's needed for windmills for example well thank you so much sir you're welcome that was fabian of westmuller from the startup ftero based in zurich and we're going to keep on talking about drones in Test 24. Winemakers, too, are now using drones to help them monitor their crops. By running a software algorithm, it can really help the winery control the quality of its vineyard. Well, one such drone is French-made Chouette that we have here on set. It's, it, the name is Chouette. It's owl in French. Does it have anything to do with the bird? I don't know what the deeper meaning uh, behind this uh, name is, but as far as I'm concerned, it's a drone that monitors the health of plants, uh, in this case, uh, the health of uh, vineyards. So essentially, it is, uh, it is a drone with one multispectral camera. Uh, it has two flight modes. It, it can fly at, three, at an altitude of three meters. So at that altitude, it detects uh, the, uh, if there is a presence of any disease in plants and it can fly at an altitude of 20 meters as well. So at that altitude, it is able to detect the maturity of grapes, which is also very important for farmers. So these are uh, some of the important features of this drone, which uh, is made by, as you mentioned, the company Chouette, which is based in Paris and which was established in June 2015. And how does artificial intelligence come into this? Well, the way it, this works is that uh, this multispectral camera, it uh, takes uh, very precise, high-definition pictures of the area that uh, the drone is deployed in. Now, these photographs, they are sent through an app. There's a dedicated application for this drone. So the photos are sent through an app to the cloud. So essentially, it is, uh, you can say, the mission control of Schwet. So you, the, all the data is sent there. And by running this data through a database using big data and artificial intelligence, uh, Schwet tells the farmer if 
his crop is okay or not. So if there's, it detects any disease, it lets the farmer know that there's a problem with this plant in this particular area. Now, the, the best part about this drone it's, is that it's very precise. So what it leads to is the reduction in the use of pesticides. So the farmer doesn't have to spray pesticides all over the plantation. By knowing which area is infected, the farmer can restrict the, you know, the use of pesticides to that particular area. So that is also one of the goals uh, of these companies. Now, at this stage, it is only detecting uh, or detecting diseases in vineyards, but the company plans to expand its ambit and include other crops like potatoes in the, in the near future. So these are some of the uh, features of this drone. It is automatic, of course. So you can have a predetermined flight path. Uh, you so can, it takes off by itself? It and... takes off by itself. It, will, it has an autonomy of one hour, in which time it can cover five hectares and it can come back, or rather it comes back after one hour, the same point from where it took off. So you don't have to monitor its landing or take off. It's automatic. Thank you so much, Dan. Well, that brings us to the end of this week's edition of Tech 24. We hope you enjoyed it, and do stay with us here on France 24.